Welcome back to our channel. In this video, we are looking the best places to live in the event of nuclear war. The possibility of nuclear war is receiving a lot of attention. This is a result of the numerous nuclear weapons that the United States, the former Soviet Union, and other countries have amassed. These nuclear weapons are thought to have the destructive power to wipe out all life on Earth. The risk of a nuclear bomb detonating somewhere on Earth grows exponentially as the world becomes more dangerous. Nobody wants to consider the devastation that such a weapon could cause, but the harsh reality is that we must be prepared for anything. Where would be safe to reside if there was a nuclear war? Before we get started make sure to like the video, subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon. What are some countries to go during a nuclear war to remain safe? Antarctica. Given that the Antarctic Treaty forbids the firing of any nuclear weapons there, Antarctica may be the safest area to flee in the case of nuclear war. Also, it is far from any significant targets. It's a bad area to live in even though it's a good spot to stay away from explosives. If you go there, you might need to take enough supplies. According to computer simulations, Antarctica would be among the safest places to live if nuclear destruction were to occur. This frozen continent is miles from anything, yet in 1959, it also served as the location of the first nuclear armaments treaty in history. New Zealand. Countries in the Southern Hemisphere are believed to be safer in the event of nuclear war because the powers of the world's nuclear are concentrated on the North. Also, New Zealand is a lovely country. They also have no nuclear arms themselves, and it is far from everywhere. Easter Islands. It is the location of the ancient Polynesian head statues. It is a far-off island, located 2,000 miles from South America. It lacks cultures, commerce, and people. As a result, it serves as a refuge from nuclear fallout. South Africa. This nation doesn't have many international political problems. In fact, it is the only country who have built and destroyed its own nuclear collection. Also, English is commonly spoken here, and people are very welcoming. Argentina. Well, this country is full of its own issues that the rest of the world doesn't even care enough to exploit it. Meaning, it's a place less likely to be nuked as well. Perth. Australia. As a result, the eastern coast of Australia, where Perth is located, is more likely to suffer than the western coast, where the government offices, big cities, and political players are located. It is a location isolated from everything else. French Polynesia. French Polynesia is a pretty and sustainable place with more than 400 islands. They are too scattered and far from the shore that the water would sink nuclear fallout before it drifts in on the trade winds. Guam. The list of places that nuclear weapons will demolish is likely to include nations that have served as military outposts. Due to its isolation and lack of resources, Guam is less likely to be on that list. No one is in danger from this location. Iceland. Iceland is a small and sparsely populated nation. It is detached from major international politics and as well as physical contact with other countries. Its physical isolation, neutral government, and climate make it a safe place from nuclear issues. Yukon. Yukon's dense forests and wildlands can help defuse nuclear fallout. However, there is limited infrastructure here and you'll be dealing with plenty of bears and moose which are scary as well. Denver. 
You can save yourself by staying in the Mile High Metropolis rather than moving far to avoid the nuclear war. Due to the NORAD installation, Denver is close to a target, the adjacent Cheyenne Mountain. But since it is not a target in and of itself, it can be happily forgotten. Even if staying here is a bit of a risk, being close to NORAD is advantageous because it takes a lot of effort on the part of the government to defend certain locations from assaults. Underground. You can create your own nuclear fallout bunker close to your house if you're one of the richest individuals on Earth. Although it would take a long time to be able to dig deep enough to avoid radioactivity, living underground can also be dangerous. Groundwater contamination and tainted food sources are other potential risks. Moving away from areas that a nuclear war could affect is therefore preferable. Why are there still places where you are safe from nuclear war? Interior of a steel-reinforced, windowless building. This is an excellent plan for keeping safe from nuclear bombs if there is an attack on the United States. You will be able to stay inside your building until the radioactive fallout clears, and your chances of survival in this environment are much greater than if you were outside. Secluded hillsides. Hillsides offer both safety and camouflage, which is essential in an attack. Since the bombs won't come down to the valleys that you'll be hiding in, your chances of survival will be high if there's a nuclear war. Underground fallout shelter. These shelters exist already, so you may want to check out one to see if it would be suitable for you. If you live in a large city, it may be a good idea to go underground, but if you're planning on doing so, you'll need to do some work on your own before you can move into your shelter. Submarine. Submarines also exist already, but since it's not possible to convert a submarine into a house, you'll have to look for an existing sub that will be large enough for your family. If it's not a submarine you can move into, then you'll have to find someone who has one that's big enough for you. Aircraft Carrier. If you have a lot of money, you can buy a Carriopera, an aircraft carrier. The Carriopera is much more efficient than building a shelter in your backyard. You can move into the house if you like, but the plane will serve you better. Deep Cave. Although this cave may be located far from the ocean, it can still serve as a shelter. The cave is the best option for a haven if there's nothing else you can use to build a bunker. The cave is quite deep, and even a few feet under the ground will prevent you from getting wet when there's heavy rain. Canyon. A canyon is a good option if there's nothing else you can use to build a bunker. If there's no other building in the area, then a cave may be the best option for you. A canyon is also a good choice for someone who wants to start building a house in the future due to nuclear wars. The North Pole. A North Pole is a good option if you want to stay during a nuclear war. The coldness of the temperature can kill bacteria and germs, thereby making it a safe shelter. A North Pole is also a good option if you don't have any other place to live. International Space Station. The International Space Station is a good option if you are looking for permanent shelter during a nuclear war. A drawback to living in the ISS is that it is not big enough for all the people, and as such, you will have to live with others. What to do after the explosion? In the minutes and hours following the explosion, a longer-term threat would emerge. Although the consequences of nuclear war are difficult to comprehend, we have known for many years that radiation can cause a variety of illnesses, including death. Nuclear fallout consists of dust and sand like radioactive particles that spread into the atmosphere. This fallout can cause radiation poisoning, which can harm cell tissues in the body and potentially kill you. 
Depending on how close you are to a nuclear detonation, the initial burst of light may blind you for 15 seconds to a minute. For those who are further away, it is best to turn and cover the eyes. If you find yourself in an open area and cannot find cover within 15 minutes, lie face down on the ground with your hands tucked under your body. Cover your face with a towel or something to hide it. In the event of radiation exposure, it is critical to remove any contaminated clothing and other items. Because radioactive material can remain on the skin and in the hair, it is critical to remove it as soon as possible. When you are certain that you are no longer contaminated, take a shower with soap and water to remove any residual radiation. During the shower, you should keep an eye on any cuts or abrasions that may have appeared while washing. If you don't have access to a shower, use a sink or faucet instead. The next best choice is to clean your body with a wipe or wet cloth. Blowing your nose and wiping your ears and eyelids are crucial since remnants could get stuck. Thank you for watching the video.